Minecraft's drown mob used to look like this. And did you know creepers used to camouflage? And these are 47 Minecraft mob facts you possibly didn't know. When the drown was first added to Minecraft, it looked a lot different. Since the original concept for the drown mob had it looking like a half skeleton, half zombie mix. Which is not only a lot creepier, but it also blends in pretty well with the dirt that you see at the bottom of the riverbed. Though I suppose it makes sense why it was changed, because this feels a little too gory for Minecraft. But it worked for the zombie pigmen, so who's to say? As of the snapshots for 1.9, we can now have three players riding in a boat. Since if you get the new camel mob inside of one of these boats, then you can have one of your friends steer, and then you and another friend held it onto the back. And at that point, it technically seats four, because the camel gets to come along as well. And then if you get some parrots on your shoulders, then I guess even more friends could come along for the journey. Unlike zombies, the husk can't transform into the drowned mob, but it can become a zombie. So by having a husk underwater for 30 seconds, it'll eventually turn into a zombie. And then after an additional 30 seconds, that same zombie will now be a drowned. Meaning if you've got a minute to spare, you've got yourself a drowned. While playing in peaceful mode, you won't see a lot of undead mobs, but two are still possible. Those being the zombie horse and the skeleton horse mobs. However, to get these in the mode, you'd have to use the summon command. And at that point, is it even worth saying that these exist in peaceful mode? Because without operator commands, they really don't. You might not notice it now, but when creepers were first added to Minecraft, they were able to camouflage. And a lot of this was because the original creeper texture actually matched the alpha grass texture that we can see here. So when standing next to the standard foliage, these creepy mobs really did fade into the background, and that made it even tougher to try to pick one of these out during the early versions. But as the textures got updated and the grass color maps changed, creepers stayed the same. And unfortunately for them, now they stick out like a sore thumb. In the experimental snapshots for 1.20, typing in the command to summon a bat would get you this. The bat would be upside down even while floating in the air. And surprisingly, this odd behavior causes the mob to glitch out quite a bit, making bats even more useless than they already were. If you're able to get up close and personal to a camel's nose, you'll notice that when you look at it dead on, it actually seems to match the texture of a wither skull. Which with Minecraft's resolution, it's tough to tell if this was intentional or just about the only way that you could make a camel's nose look right. But intentional or not, it's still a fun easter egg. The rascal and the tough golem might not have won the mob vote, but they are still in Minecraft. Because in Bedrock Edition, there was a special free skin pack that was added in that would let you choose between different clothings for the 12 different skin, including the rascal, the sniffer, and the tough golem. So it's a far cry from the mobs actually being in the game, but it's a lot better than some of the other mob vote losers got, so I guess you take what you get. If you listen closely to this sound that the fox makes, you'll notice that when the fox screeches, the first and third sound that it plays are actually the same. But the third sound effect is reversed with a lower pitch. And funnier still, the fox sounds actually never came from a real fox. They're just heavily edited sounds combined from dogs and cats. Have you ever seen a fox with a beard? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. But if you were to get your fox to hold a wither skull in its mouth, then you'll notice that it looks like the fox has a beard. Or if that's not for you, then get it to hold a skulk sensor and that'll look like a goatee. If we push this cat off a cliff, nothing happens. And thankfully so. Otherwise, Otherwise it'd be a murderer. But the idea behind this is that cats tend to land on their feet. And that'd be why cats in Minecraft not only don't take fall damage, but even if they were to fall into a dripstone spike, they're still not going to get hurt. Which is a pretty sweet deal. It's hard to say I'm not jealous. In 1.19 we have chickens that lay eggs, and in Minecraft 2.0 we've got chickens that lay diamonds. That's no joke, although it was meant to be. Back in April Fool's 2013, Mojang added this blue chicken to their fake snapshot that could lay diamonds and lapis lazuli. Which sounds great, but be careful since these also had a tendency to explode explode. By this point, everyone's familiar with the rarest mob in Minecraft. But this mob can also be very rare, considering that there's only a rare chance that an arctic fox even spawns in a snowy tiger biome, and then add on to that another 5% chance of that fox being a baby variant, and it gets to the point where if you find one of these, buy a lottery ticket. Your luck's pretty good. You can kill this whole batch of zombified piglins without any of them getting angry. You just need to be precise, since if you were to kill this mob in one hit, then it doesn't have the chance to update the universal aggression tag on the other monsters. That means with a strong enough weapon and a critical hit, you don't have to worry about upsetting the pack when you pick off a few. This is an iron golem, and this is the love golem. If you put together four iron blocks and a carved pumpkin on top, you'll of course get the love golem. Exclusively found in the Love and Hugs update, this special mob is meant to be a manifestation of the villagers' love. And that's probably the reason why it's passive toward any players, or even hostile mobs. Which, yeah, does mean that it doesn't do much. But in fairness, we can't attack mobs in this joke update either, so at least it's not alone. It's impossible to turn a squid upside down with a dinner bone name tag. Now, 
Now don't be mistaken, you can still name a squid Dinnerbone or Grum, but you won't see any visual difference. Even Mojang doesn't know which way's the right way up for this mob. It's just that silly. The Warden's a strong mob, but just how strong is it? Well, it's so strong that if you were to add up the health of the Ender Dragon and the Wither combined, that's how many hearts the Warden has. Folks, that's 250 hearts of health for this one Warden. So you remember the fact that the Wither on Bedrock has 300 hearts. And uh, sorry to any Bedrock players out there, that just sounds terrible to deal with. If you look closely at certain villagers' heads, you'll notice they might be wearing some pretty weird hats. Like the Librarian Villager, for instance, which, while it might look like a fez, actually is a book when you look at it from the right angle. And while it might look like the Swamp Villager has a bonnet on or something like that, it's actually just a lily pad just splayed over the top of their head. Which honestly makes me jealous, I wish I could wear these as well. And if you're jealous of their style, don't worry, with the slash item replace command, you could also wear those kind of books as hats as well. This is an Elder Guardian, and this is the Elder Guardian Ghost. Exclusive just to Bedrock Edition, this secret mob can only be spawned in using the summon command. But what does it do? Well, clearly not much. It doesn't even have a texture, and all that you're able to see is its shadow. Eerie. In the April Fool's snapshot for the one block at a time update, if you were to summon in an iron golem using this special name, then you'd notice that Billy Belong has its arms permanently extended into the air, which is actually a reference to one of the developers that works on Minecraft, which is an odd way to be memorialized, but it's not like the Dinnerbone name tag makes any more sense anyway. Even though the Alay made it into Minecraft during the Wild update, it was originally planned all the way back for the Nether update, although back then it would have been called the Wisp, and it would have had a much different look. Even when it was renamed to the Alay and it was planned to be added in, there could have been different colors that we saw for the mob, which I'll say I'm disappointed that we didn't see. But you can find a yellow Alay that shows up in the Minecraft Legends trailer, so I guess the idea is still there. Hopefully you've never let all the villagers die during a raid, but if you did, here's what you'd see. After all the villagers are gone, or the beds in the village are destroyed, the raiding vindicators will celebrate their victory by laughing and then raising their arms into the air, which really adds insult to injury. So to keep your village and your ego intact, just stay away if you have the bad omen effect. Obviously, piglins don't exist, but their sound effects do come from a special kind of Swedish pig, the Lindorotsvin, which when you read that out loud, it's easy to see why they went with the name piglin. Even with Google Translate, I'm not entirely sure how to say that one. This Minecraft mob has no AI, and the reason for that is because that's your job. You see, in the education edition for Minecraft, this robot called the Agent is a mob that's specifically designed to teach players how to code. And with that, you can teach this mob to do different things like harvest your crops, place blocks, and a whole number of other things, which is a lot cooler than than just looking at Microsoft Visual Studio, so I'll take that trade off. You can't shear a baby sheep, but with a command you can summon a baby that's been sheared. And it looks pretty cursed. Plus it really shows how long the sheep's head is under all that wool. And no amount of wool blocks is worth having to look at this sad sight. Did you know creepers are aliens? Well, not all of them, but this one certainly is. Since, thanks to an experiment done by the University of Southampton, students were able to send personal belongings into space. And one of those students sent a creeper. So when you look up into space, just know that somewhere out there, there was a creeper, and thankfully it didn't explode on the way out, otherwise that wouldn't be as fun of a fact. The reason parrots dance when you play a music disc is because of the party emojis animation, which itself is based on this iconic gif of a kakapo, or owl parrot, dancing. This mob still isn't in Minecraft, but back when the creator was developing it, he talked about adding in a special red dragon that could exist outside of the end. And while it's unclear if this mob will be added in since the creator's departure in 2014, Jem has mentioned that if it were to be added, it would be tied to the dragon egg you get from the current dragon fight. The reason that wandering traders were added to Minecraft was because of inspiration from other various RPGs. And one of the game's designers even confirms this in the article, Meet the Wandering Trader, which would be why you could find these incredibly dangerous places, since they're meant to help offer you some kind of healing item like they do in the RPGs. Although it's hard to say that their items are nearly as desirable as the ones found in the other games. If you ever see a chicken in the ocean, count yourself lucky, since there's a very small chance of a drowned mob being able to spawn on the back of a chicken like a baby zombie does. And besides, it's obvious they were forced there. It doesn't seem that the chicken likes the water very much anyway. In Bedrock Edition, it's possible to keep parrots on your shoulder when you take flight with an elytra. Or rather, I should say, you're keeping them around where your shoulders should be, since when you look at it from this angle, it really just looks like they're hovering in place. Which is a bit peculiar, but they're at least more loyal than the ones in Java Edition, who bail on you when you start to get any kind of speed. This villager was never seen in Minecraft, but if you go within the game's files, there sure enough is an unused texture for the angry villager mob, featuring red eyes and angry eyebrows 
eyebrows. And even though villagers can still get mad in the game if you were to punch them, even with all those particles, it's still not nearly as intimidating as one of these. What would you think is the strongest mob in Minecraft? Well, it might seem like the Warden, considering that it only takes three hits to kill you in full netherite enchanted armor, the crown for this would actually go to a charged creeper. Considering that on hard difficulties, this can do 127 damage. And for that much, you probably want to have a good set of blast protection armor, or at least a totem of undying as a backup call. The bee was supposed to be much, much smaller. As shown in this official video put out by Mojang, an early design for the bee would have had it closer in size to the baby turtle, but that's still more appealing than its first design. And when you can't tell if you're looking at the bee's front or its rear, you know you've got to change the look. This isn't a villager, but I wouldn't blame you if you thought so. But rather, this mob's called the NPC, and it only exists within the Education Edition. And while these do share a lot of visual similarities to the villager, they're actually a mob that exists only for map makers to make special qualifications, like having text pop-ups or even buttons to press that summon different commands. It's pretty cool, but if you don't add those, they have no AI and basically useless. If you're running away from a piglin, don't bother closing that door. Since shocking as it may be, piglins are actually smart enough to open up doors. There aren't even doors that spawn in the nether. How did they learn to do that? So for your safety, stick to trapdoors and fence gates. They can't figure those out yet. In current versions of Minecraft, there's no way for the Ender Dragon to defeat the Warden. And that makes the biggest boss in Minecraft really feel like a lightweight. Especially considering that with enough Wardens, you were once able to blast the Ender Dragon completely off course. Making the final boss of Minecraft feel a lot more like an afterthought. Although goats in Minecraft can tend to break off their horns when they run into a wall, that's not actually based on anything in real life. Because the truth is that goats' horns are actually a part of the animal's skull. So if they were to break off, the goat would have bigger problems. And really, this behavior in Minecraft much more closely resembles a deer with its antlers. If you put a camel inside of a minecart, it'll start playing its running animation indefinitely, which might make this the cheapest perpetual motion machine to make. It's at least the weirdest one I've seen. But if you have a saddle, you can also join in on the fun. So at least it's not exclusionary. This isn't Steve, but actually this is the unused human mob from Minecraft. Back in early developments of the game, there did exist a hostile mob that looked identical to Steve. But even though they were hostile, it's hard to say that they were intimidating, considering that spawning these in would just cause them to move around all janky. And when you watch that old footage, I think it's plenty clear to see why they removed them from the game. In the past, it was possible to damage the Ender Dragon with snowballs, which makes sense for the blaze, but it's a lot weirder to see this happen against the dragon. And Mojang agreed, since as of snapshot 15w32a, the dragon no longer takes damage from snowballs. But don't worry, they're still worth keeping around for taking out the end crystals. All right, pop quiz. Have you ever heard of the Minecraft mob, the Spark? If you haven't, then you probably haven't looked at the game's files, considering that only there's the Shulker's bullet called the Spark. But other than that, how would you even know this? It's not like it spawns with a name tag or anything. But there you go. Now you got something for your next Minecraft trivia night. The Ender Dragon doesn't breathe fire, but it does have fire aspect. And you'll see that if you try to shoot a perched dragon with a bow and arrow, this time instead of your arrows colliding, they'll just bounce off. And just in case having your arrows bounce off wasn't enough of a reason to stop, the fire really makes it obvious to cut it out. Before horses were added to Minecraft, there were horses. Notice the quotation marks. Because these special mobs were only in the Java edition snapshots for the April Fool's update. And they were really just retextured cows and pigs. Which did make for a good joke, but shortly after, Mojang worked with Dr. Jar to add in proper horses into the game. And thankfully, they didn't look like this. Why is this wolf's tail spinning? It's not a glitch, but instead, this is because the wolf's tail is linked to its health. So low health equals a lower tail, but the opposite also applies. So if you use commands to artificially increase the wolf's health, it'll start spinning like this. And thankfully, it doesn't spin fast enough for the wolf to up and fly away. Then we'd have a real problem on our hands. Using this command, we're able to summon in a special wolf called Mars, which is a mob so rare, it only exists in the April Fool's version of the One Block at a Time update. But much like the special name tag for the rabbit variant named Toast, this gives you a different colored variant on the standard wolf skin. And hopefully this hints at getting different breeds of wolves added into the future. It wouldn't be the first time they took a feature from April Fool's and made it official. Did you know there could have been a fourth frog variant? Because looking at concept art for the frog before it was added in, there did exist a special blue frog that could have been added as well. Which if you ask me is a huge missed opportunity for not adding this in. At the very least, it could have given us another color of frog light, which it's always nice to have another building block. But really, even if this frog didn't get added in, at least all the ones that we have look so much better than the original frog texture. Ugh, that one's hideous. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?